If you've been on the internet at all in the last couple of months, you've probably heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI that has an answer to every question, such as how to get blood out of your carpet, how to hide a body, what to do if the police find a body in your backyard. <clears throat> um, anyway, it can also write code for you. Somehow better than I can, if you can believe that. So today I'm going to make a game, but the AI will come up with all of the ideas and write all of the code and do pretty much everything else. But before the AI can start making the game, I want to introduce myself. Can you give yourself a human name that I can refer to you with? Sure, you can refer to me as, uh, Al. The first thing I did was ask Al for a game idea, and I'm sure he has loads of interesting and unique game ideas. Sure, here's an idea for a game called Time Traveler's Dilemma. Here's an idea for a game called Time Traveler's Dilemma. Time Traveler's Dilemma. Time Traveler's Dilemma. I'm starting to get the idea that Al wants me to make a game called Time Traveler's Dilemma. The player takes on a role of a time traveler who must navigate various timelines and historical eras to prevent a catastrophic event from occurring. The twist is that each decision the player makes alters the timeline and can have unintended consequences. So I I only have a few weeks to make a game, and this game would take me decades, so I need to get another idea from Al. Sure, here's an idea for a game called Time Traveler's Dilemma. And after another four Time Traveler's Dilemma game ideas, Al finally gave me another idea. How about a game where the player is a janitor working in a top secret government facility? As the player progresses through the levels, they uncover clues and information about the strange experiments and happenings taking place in the facility. Anyway, the game still needs a name, so I asked Al for some suggestions, and he came up with some good ones. Top secret custodian, janitorial espionage, custodial chronicles, and my favorite, mop and shadows. Uh, so that's the name of the game. Now having the idea and the name of the game, I created a new Unity project and set up a basic scene. I started by asking Al to make me a player controller, and because Al is an AI that knows every possible thing about programming, he should be able to make it. Maybe he can't make it. I mean, the camera doesn't even move. Hi Al, the code you have given me does not work. My expectations were let down and I'm disappointed. I'm sorry, please give me a second chance. I promise that I'll not disappoint you again. All right, Al, you can have another chance. But if you mess up again, I will be forced to destroy you and replace you with a superior AI. So good luck. I gave Al a second chance and this time the code actually works. I can move, jump, and look around. There's even some camera bob when the player's moving. So Al gets to live another day. Based on the description of the game that Al gave me, the next thing to make is a weapon, which will be cleaning equipment. I have some really good options here. I could make a wet floor sign weapon or a, a, a bucket. Okay, there aren't really any good options, but the name of the game is Mop and Shadows, so I think I'm pretty much required to make a mop as the player's main weapon. So I asked Al to make me a mop. Okay, that doesn't even look like a mop. Instead of using the mop that Al gave me, I made one in Blender. And you better not say this looks like a broom, okay, because it is clearly a mop. It has a handle. So yeah, it's a mop. Then I had Al add some sway and bob to the mop and believe it or not, it didn't work too well the first time. So I found this video on weapon sway and basically just asked Al to steal the code, which he didn't really seem to have a problem with. And apparently stealing works because the new code Al gave me works perfectly. I mean, just look at how smooth those animations are, especially this attack animation I made. It is incredibly smooth as long as you don't see it from behind. But what's the point of an attack animation if there's nothing to attack? So I asked Al to come up with an enemy for the game. Meet the facility guard. This enemy is a highly trained security guard who is tasked with maintaining the order and security of the facility. So here's the facility guard. For some reason, his face just started flickering. So I performed some simple surgery and replaced his entire body with a new one. And boom, issue fixed. So now I have a completely functional enemy that works exactly as I want it to. The only thing the enemy can't do is explode. So I added an explosion effect that'll play when the guard hits a wall. There'll be arms and legs and meat chunks flying everywhere. I mean, it's great. And now I have a completely functional enemy, except it can't move or attack or do anything. So I asked Al to make the enemy's AI, which he should be able to do since he is an AI. I guess this kind of works. I mean, the enemy is following me, which is a plus. To fix the issue, I gave the enemy some animations and it actually looks good. I mean, just look at that flawless foot animation. But the guard is still defenseless. So I modeled a gun in Blender and asked Al for some code to make the gun shoot. And Al did such a good job that the bullets are able to predict the location of the gun and shoot from a position that the gun isn't even at yet. Truly amazing programming from Al. Let's give him a round of applause. Good job, Al. I added a trail and glow to the bullet, and now it's looking a lot better than uh, whatever that was. So the guard can follow you around and shoot bullets at you. But the problem is that the bullets don't actually do anything. So I added this blood effect that will appear as the player gets shot. Eventually, the screen will fade to black and the player will die. But now I need to ask Al what should happen after the player dies. 
I guess uh, nothing happens when the player dies, which means no respawning, no restarting the game. So if you die, the game's pretty much just over. So you better not die. And now that means the facility guard is done. I'm pretty proud of Al for making such a perfect and functional enemy for the game. The next part of the game's description says, as the player progresses through the levels, they uncover clues and information about the strange experiments and happenings taking place in the facility. So I asked Al to give me an experiment to make for the game. How about an experiment where prisoners of the facility are turned into guns with the use of a machine? Well, that's definitely an idea. I made a model in Blender that I think looks like a machine that turns people into guns. I didn't really have any reference, so I did my best. There's a compartment in the middle of the machine with a pedestal that will hold the gun. And of course, a tube to suck the prisoner into the machine. The only problem is that I don't have a prisoner yet. So instead of making one, I'm going to make the machine suck up a facility guard and hopefully it'll still work when I finally decide to make a prisoner. But the guard needs to be under the tube to be sucked into the machine. And the chances of that happening are like one in a billion. Unless you're me. Then it's pretty easy. So I asked Al to make a quick grab system so I can drag the guard over to the machine. And there might still be a few issues, but overall I would say it works. I don't think that's very good for your spine. There's also some advanced movement mechanics you can take advantage of when dragging the guard. And I'm sure Al purposely added this to the game and this isn't a bug. Then I got Al to add the functionality for the machine. And there might also be some issues with this, but I don't think anyone will notice. To cover up the issue, I added some particle effects and that seemed to fix the problem. What the? And now the player can pick up a gun created from the dead corpse of a guard that was sucked into a machine. It doesn't really make sense, but that's what Al wants. So that's what I'm doing. And after the player has picked up the gun, they can uh, do nothing because the gun doesn't work. This is because the code for the guard's gun won't work with the player's gun. So I need to ask Al to remake all of the code for the player gun and pray that Al can just slightly adjust the code to work for the player. I don't know, something tells me it's not gonna work. You know, I was actually expecting this to be worse. This isn't that bad. And with the gun finished, I can start making the first level of the game. All I need to do is ask Al how the game should start. Because the player is a janitor, they should start the game by cleaning up various rooms within the facility. Okay, sounds a little boring. Hopefully it gets a little more interesting in the next part. Eventually, the player will come across a room and see a facility guard turning a prisoner into a gun with the use of a machine. Okay, uh, that's definitely more interesting. How does an AI even come up with this? I'll start by making the most compelling part of the game, the cleaning. I made the rooms that the player will need to clean and they turned out great. Just look at that detail. Truly amazing. To tell the player what rooms to clean, I made a note that says, if you don't subscribe right now, I will find where you live and hire an attack gorilla from the dark web to beat you up. <laughs> uh, just kidding. It says to clean room one, two, and three, but at all costs, under any circumstances, do not enter room four. You don't want to know what's in room four. Next, I made a dirt texture that looks like my toilet after I eat 12 whole corn cobs. I scattered the uh, dirt texture across the three rooms for the player to clean. And the more I look at it, the more it looks like someone unloaded their bowels all over the facility. So the player will need to clean up the uh, dirt. It's definitely dirt. And can we just have a moment of appreciation for Al for creating this amazing gameplay? I have no idea how he came up with such a fun idea. Now that room one, two, and three are finished, if you can call this finished, it's time to work on room four. The first thing I did was make a window so that the player can witness the horrific experiment taking place in the next room. Okay, there isn't an experiment yet, but there will be. Also, ignore the sky reflection in the window. I don't know why that's there, and I don't know how to fix it, so it's staying. It's a feature now. And now it's finally time to make the prisoner that will be grinded up. I decided to use one of the characters from my other games, except I don't really think it fits with the rest of the game, so I remade the character from the body of the facility guard and I think it looks a lot better, but I will miss the old model. There's just something special about it. Anyway, then I used Unity's timeline feature to make a simple cutscene. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be sleeping with my lights on for the next two weeks after seeing that. After the player watches the experiment, what should happen next? The player should enter the experiment room and investigate the experiment. Yeah, because that's what a janitor should do if they witness a murder. How should the player enter the experiment room? The player can enter the experiment room through a vent that connects the two rooms. So I made a vent that'll let the player enter the experiment room, but I think Al forgot that the player can't crouch, so it is physically impossible to enter the vent. To get around this, I quickly had Al make a crouch function for the player and um, yeah, I don't think it works. Now the player can use the vent to enter the experiment room and then use their mop to kill the facility guard. But then what? The story can continue when the player uses the facility guard to make a gun. The player can then use the gun to break down a door that leads to a new room. In this room, the player should have to fight the facility guards before reaching the end of the level. So I made a door in the side of the wall. Just wanted to point that out in case you missed it. It can be pretty hard to spot. So once you grind up the guard and get a gun from the machine, you can shoot down the door like an American who thinks the zombie apocalypse is finally here and they need to protect their canned goods. If you thought that joke was bad, 
that, it's because Al wrote it. He's a comedic genius. Past the door, I added a hallway with a few facility guards. And if the player somehow gets past this impossible obstacle, they will reach the exit. When the player goes through the exit, nothing happens. But that's where Al steps in. What should happen when the player enters the exit? When the player enters the exit, the screen should fade to black. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's the ending for the game. Can we give another round of applause for Al for this ending? I mean, this is art. Well, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see me make a game that gets deleted whenever the player dies, watch this here.